Kent State Wrestling Talk. And we've got a bit of a change up tonight. We have the man, the myth, the legend, Jermail Porter, Kent State All-American. Jermail, you were the first All-American for Kent State in 23 years in 2009. The all last All-American before you was 1986, Don Horning. Did I get that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. So you actually made the NCAA semifinals, correct? Uh, yeah, semifinals. Okay. In the quarterfinals, you actually beat future NCAA champ Zach Ray. Also correct? Yes. I'm on a roll tonight, huh? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jermail, you're an All-American in 2009. You finished sixth in sixth place. What was the score? With It was Mark Ellis in the semifinals, right? Yeah. And he was the um, champ that year. Yeah, he was a ventral champ. I think it was like 5-2 uh, or 5-3, something like that. 5-2, five, 5-3, five, okay. So you lose to Alice, and then you're in the Conti semis, and then is that where you wrestled Rocheholt, or was that for fifth and sixth? Um, I wrestled him in the Conti semis, and then I go Zabriskie for fifth and sixth, I believe. So wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. You triple dipped the three NCAA champions. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't just rough. make that up, did I? No, it was a rough, it was a rough day that day. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I love day. that we're able to laugh about this. I yeah, yeah, that. it's funny now. <laughs> you lose to the uh, the NCAA champ that year, Mark Ellis. Yeah. Then you lose to Rocho. Rocho. Maybe Rocho. he was a runner up. What, what he, he was runner up. He was runner up. Sorry. Runner up. Yeah, They're all runner. finalists. So Rocho, you lost to younger Rocho, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and then in the fifth and sixth, you lost to David Zabriskie, who was NCAA yeah. champ. They were all they were all like one point matches too. The last two were like one point matches. Like I was there. Like I was there, but I don't know if I was all the way there. But I was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, I was there, but I don't know. At that point, you kind of like uh, the fanfare is like kind of going down at that point a little bit because you go from being in the semis and it's like okay. And you go, the rest of Conti is like for what third and fourth, like ah, it sucks, but you know, it is it is it is what it is. So right now, you know, you're sitting in a in a back office of a gym that you uh, own and operate, correct? Correct. Where is your gym, Jermail? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland. Where at in Cleveland? West side? Uh, yeah, West Park, um, Cam's Corner area. Oh, West side of West Park. So you're not too far from like Rocky River. You're probably five minutes from Rocky Lakewood. River. Uh, a few minutes from Lakewood. Yeah, uh, Lutheran West is right there too, isn't it? Uh, somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple cuts yeah. there so far. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're within five minutes. Of all that. How far? How far are you from St. Ed's? Um, that's in Lakewood. That's probably about a eight minute trip for me. Oh, wow, wow, you're you're pretty centrally located there. Is it the yeah. west side of West Park? Uh, no, I think I'm further east so i'm okay. at the very so if you're familiar with the area you know i-90 um yeah. is the bridge that's or the the highway that separates lakewood from cleveland yes so if you are adventuring from lakewood into cleveland via warren road yeah uh, i'm like two minutes from there how far are you from the hilliard exit is that the next um, exit then yes the next exit up okay. I, it's, uh, that's actually i think to go home so uh, i'm like uh shoot three minutes two minutes from that are you do you live in fairview or do you live where do you live rocky river i live in uh i live in um lakewood oh you live in lakewood okay because i just took uh nick nemeth we did the dual meet uh last thursday and his parents live off of hilliard in um fairview. Okay. yeah yeah so fair, so fairview runs right in i mean it, it's all tied in everything this is a pretty centralized location so yeah hilliard's right there you can hit the fair, you hit the Fairview. I mean, I'm five minutes from Fairview. I'm a couple minutes basically from Lakewood and okay. Rivers, like a mile away. What is your? What's the actual location of your gym? What's the address of the gym? If I wanted to come and have you three, torture three, me, five three Edgecliff Terrace Drive. We're next to the BMV and the Giant Eagle. That's where I, it's usually my reference points. This is like one of the most popular v, BMVs in the uh, Cuyahoga County. It just so happens to be my neighbor. My my, my neighbor. So um. That's why I used to tell when usually when I say that, uh, people are like, oh, I know exactly where it's at. And that's, and we're like right next door. And do you do all types of training, Jermail? Um, yeah, for the most part, it's, um, 
pretty it can be sports specific which we do a lot of now and the seasons change um whether it's uh rugby lacrosse um then it flips the basketball wrestling you know when everybody has their off season they come in and train everybody going in the in season they go take care of the football um baseball that's probably been our uh our big uh and my brother does a lot of the women's sports so basketball and rugby um he's had a number of girls um um because you, if you're from the area st joe's is right down the street and they're uh um perennial uh state uh powerhouses in rugby women's rugby okay. so um yeah it's right down the street from us so that was us we've expanded the sports uh and then general population. I have a number of general populations. I have a number of um, um, mixed martial arts and jujitsu practitioners also too. Just makes sense um, from a programming standpoint. So yeah, I got a lot of that. And then you throw general population in there. So yeah, I got a lot going on with that. When people roll up on you and they see your physical stature, because you're a massive human. Um, every time I see it, it's like it's it's. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, this dude is huge. He's even bigger than I remember. Um. <laughs> You're about six, yeah. six, six, seven, six, seven. And then when I see you, there's a fluctuation usually from three ten to three forty, right? Is that are you usually in? That's about your wheelhouse, right? Yeah, that's about depending on what holiday it is. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I see that you're all you're big into your mom and dad and going back to Akron with your brother, yeah. and you guys get after it, and it looks like fun times, but. That, yeah. That's funny that you say that, you know, depending on the holiday. But what's what's the ceiling now? Is 340 still the ceiling for you, weight-wise? Yeah, yeah, probably. I, I dip into 50 probably, too. You know, that you, get, you get up to 350? Yeah, but that for me, um, for me, like, because um, I have such a large frame, my brother does my body fat. So, I mean, I could be down to 13% body fat, and I'll be 325 still. That is insane. So, you still get the abs, even at three fifty. Yeah. You've got the top four abs. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. You'll get just, just. I'm, I'm just a real dense guy. Even you know when I was football, I was like three fifteen, but I was like sub, sub ten percent body fat just because of how tall and how big. Um, so like for me to get to three hundred pounds, I'd be, I'd look like a basketball player. Well, that's, that's unbelievable to me. Um, yeah, I kept growing after wrestling. That, that was the weirdest thing. Like that's what I didn't realize that until years later. You know, I got to 25. I was like, why am I still growing? And they didn't have an answer. So I was, and Ken, I, Ken, I was 6'6". And I kept growing. And then I became unreal. six. And my official height is 6'7 and 3 quarters. So you're almost 6'8". So I'm, I'm almost 6'8". What was your NFL when they were doing your NFL specs? What did they measure you at in the NFL? As far as height and weight? Yeah, height and weight in the NFL. So I was legitimately like 6'6 six, six and a half at that point. 6'6 six, six and a half. Um, I was like 305 ish, 310. I think I was about 310. Um, and that was coming after uh, uh, NCAA. So it wasn't necessarily uh, peak physical condition. I had to grow into that body, and I did grow into that body, um, which was like a dream come true. So <laughs> well, it's, it's wild to think about it. You know, now you own your own gym. What's the actual name of your gym? Uh, Functional Fitness Applied Shape and Conditioning, or FFASC for short which is on your shirt and on your hat. I'm glad that you get branding. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, when you, you know, what's wild is your story's crazy. And I don't know if a lot of your clients really know your story and how much actual background you're able to give them. But the thing that started it for you is you went to Akron Firestone high school was, which was an arts and music school, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you went there to play in the band, right? Yeah. So you went there in the band. I thought and I was going to be a musician, man. I thought was, that, was, that was my life's goal was to be a musician. You, but you can still play, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, I can. I'm not as good as I once was, but yeah, I can. But at 13, I thought I was going to be a musician. That was my, uh, that was what I thought life was going to have for me. So tell me about the turning point when you saw the fight in the hallway. Oh, yeah, man. So I saw this fight maybe eight days into school, high school. You know, I, I, I'm uh it's only me and my brother, and I'm the oldest. So it's not like you have, like, someone like, hey, I'm going to walk you to your first class the first day of school. And, you know, I'm out. I'm in high school. It's, like, the Badlands as far as I'm concerned. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, I, I got this instrument instrument with me. I'm walking the halls. What instrument? Uh Oh, so at that time, I had the electric bass okay. because I was in jazz band. But I had this instrument with me. I'm, I'm watching, uh, you know, I'm low man on the toe pole. You go on the first day. I see this fight break out. 
And uh, I remember thinking to myself, like, bro, what if that happens to me? Like, you know, I'm the, I don't have anybody to be like, hey, man, someone's, someone's so picking on me. <laughs> like, you know, I, I didn't have anybody. It was just, it was me. Like, you know, and so like, I got to do something. One of the guys was a football player and he was getting his butt kicked. I remember thinking, like, hmm. I don't think I, I, I don't think that's the route for for me at that time. Like these guys don't seem real tough, and um, I had a mutual friend who also was a musician, but he was uh, into wrestling, and um, I uh, I went to the wrestling meeting, and that was it. Because he was like, "Oh, this guy he plays football, and he you know, and he wrestles, and he you know he's he's tough, he's badass, this that, and another." And he turned out he, he was for that ecosystem. Oh right, yeah, I'm gonna do that because if a fight breaks out and I have to get a fight. This seems more transferable than, you know, being in a three point stance and being able to, you know, blow someone off a line or a pass rush or anything like that. I'd rather be able to take someone down and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that was it. Literally. I had this and that conversation lasted like 90 seconds in my brain. <laughs> that was that was it until like, yeah, I'm gonna wrestle. I love it. And then didn't you say um your first match was a home match. Wasn't it the last match of the year? And they let, they put you in at 215, right? Uh, it was the – yeah, so it was the last conference. It was a dual meet. It was a dual meet. It was the last dual meet of the year. And um, it was against a kid who was actually pretty good. And um, the heavyweight – or the 215 in front of me, um, he was sick or got hurt that day. And I remember I waited like a 210. Like I was like 210, so I was – you know, I didn't have to cut any weight or anything like that. And um, I had only been to like a scrimmage or something like that. You know, I had no, I mean, I, they should they should just for, they should have just forfeited the weight class is what they should have did. But the fact that they put me in there, um, okay. And I went out there and I got pinned. I, it had to be under a minute. It had to be probably under 50 seconds. So somewhere less, it was so fast. I just remember getting cradled and that was it. I couldn't be upset because I'm like, I don't know what's going on right now. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was that was that. I mean, I didn't like how I felt because it was embarrassing. But yeah, well, all the girls were there, weren't they? Aren't oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, as I came into freshman high school wrestling, there was a lot of upperclassmen, so you had a lot of um, attention from high school girls. And uh, I, you know, here I am, you know, marching my dopey ass out there to get pinned by <laughs> one of their best guys in their team, and I get cradled right in front of, um the visitor section, which is all the girls from our high school, I get cradled like right in front of oh. the front row, like on the edge of the mat, like just like just like a baby. He just cradle crunched me. Oh. And I was like, oh, this sucks. And, How uh, tall are you at this point? Six two, six three? Oh, I'm like six foot. I'm, I'm oh, you're six I'm, foot two ten. Yeah, I'm like six foot. Yeah, I hadn't hit a growth spread or anything. I I, I was probably closer to normal size than um, even being someone to consider like a larger kid, like you know, maybe the adults at the time saw, but I wasn't. I was average at best. I just, I mean, I was two ten, and like probably like twenty two percent body fat. You know, oh, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like I'm not. It's not good weight. I should have not even been anywhere there. So yeah. So the progression is then you make like the district tournament as a as a was it as a sophomore? Uh. Did I make, uh, yeah, maybe I, I think I was like an honorable mention or something. Oh, no, no, check this out. I didn't go to districts as a sophomore. Um, I went to sectionals and I only went to one day of sectionals and I got beat. You didn't make the second day of the sectional? No, voluntarily because I had, because <laughs> I had a, <laughs> because I had a performance on the Saturday. Oh my and, God. You skipped and, the sectional tournament the second day. So you can go play bass guitar. I think at that point I was like one and one, you know, in the tournament. You know, I think I was like yeah. one and one. And I was like, yeah, hey, coach, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. And he's like, what? And I don't remember exactly how the conversation went. I imagine he was not very happy. I think I had like something like maybe 10 wins that year. I wasn't, it wasn't like life or death, you know, as far as, far as I was concerned. And probably as far as he concerned, like he's not going to contribute that much anyway. Junior year, you were a district qualifier, right? Yeah, so junior year, uh, we were at Perry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, junior year, I uh, I do qualify for Dixers, and uh, I uh, make it to the second day, 
I lose a stupid match. I shouldn't lose that. So, I mean, I think I only lost six matches as a junior. I was a head case there. I, didn't, I mean, again, I'm at a performing arts school. I got four music classes a day. I'm kind of Akron, Akron Firestone is that intense without the, the specialization. I would have two actual hands on like band classes, and I'd have a music theory class, and then I'd have another, I'd have like four of those a day, in addition to math and science and English and da 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 da. So, like, at that point, still, I don't see the big picture of this, like, wrestling thing. I know I'm bigger and stronger than everybody. I know I'm like, ah, well, I don't – Zeb, I don't even know this college wrestling at this point. I don't even know. So you don't even realize that there's a school 20 minutes away. Penn no. State has Division One college wrestling. You have no idea. I don't – at this point, I don't even know it's college wrestling. I'm still thinking I'm, I'm doing these theory classes because I'm going to go to – uh, the Oberlin Conservatory of Music, or I'm going to go somewhere. In my mind, I'm still, like, there. I just do this wrestling thing to try to get girls. Like, that's, uh, <laughs> hey, you either like me because I'm a musician or I'm an athlete. Which one Which one you like, you know? That's uh, my only real driving factor in this. I, I don't even know it's college. I'm, I, I don't even know it's college wrestling. Okay, are you marching in the band at the halftime at the football games? Because you're no, not. Do- okay, no, you're not doing I'm that. Like, you're you're in I'm like, like a Miles symphony. Davis cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm like go to the jazz club. That's that dude on got the. Got it. Got like, it. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm not. Like, I'm not in a marching band. I'm like, no. hey, we're going to go listen to some jazz tonight. Gotcha. You know, if there's a bass player up there with a cigarette in his mouth and, and with shades <laughs> on, I'm I'm that guy. <laughs> dude, it's so amazing because. It's like a true meteoric rise. Oh, yeah, sure. You went from dorky band guy, bass player. Well, you're cool amongst wrestling. musicians, right? You're cool amongst musicians because you're like, oh. No, no, oh. no, and I get that. But, like, amongst athletes, it's just like, oh, yeah, I know. Because, no, 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 yeah. listen, I got a lot of respect for you musicians because I can't read music, and I love music. I love going to concerts. I love all genres, right? Sure. Um. I'm not super hardcore big on the country, but like I love 90s gangster rap. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, Tupac, um, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, NWA, like 80s, late 80s, early 90s. I love that stuff, right? Like that's my that's my my wheelhouse. Obviously, alternative rock, love it, right? Um, I don't really like the new stuff. Like, I don't like the new poppy stuff a lot, but like (laughs) I love 80s, 70s, rock, 90s rock. I like all that, you know? So I really am into it. I love going to concerts, everything. So, like, in the sense of what you're saying, you're going to try and play in a jazz band. Yeah. That was the goal. Like, I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to uh, go to all. Yeah. Well, I, the odds was to be a professional studio musician. I'm telling you the truth that I was going to be a professional. So, like, when you get an artist and you have an artist, and you say, hey, I need you guys to produce a, a track for my artist. All right, you're the guy that goes in and lays the track down, and you get paid money, and that's 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 it. That's it. I've, I've laid the track down for whoever to come in, lay on the vocal, and I'm on to the next thing. I'm just Bruno Mars the... says Jermaine yeah, Bruno Mars, to play. Yeah, you're yeah you're you're you are laying the base for this on this track right here. Got it. All right, gotcha. can... a musician, whatever. I just brought it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a studio musician. You, it's a real like faceless, nameless, thankless job. You're not. You don't even go on the road with them. Yeah, like, hey, you're I not, you're not going on tour. You're just no. laying down the studio track. No, and you just run them through. That's it. That was, yeah. the, that was the original goal, yeah. So what's the where's the fork in the road your senior year? Where do you figure out, like, Kent State starts uh, recruiting you, you make the state tournament, and the next thing you know, you're in the state finals as a senior. Where is the fork in the road for you when you really – what's your aha moment? Do you have when it? I, when, I, when I lose to that kid in dist- at the district tournament the second day – uh, I think he asked him for Barbadon. I forget the guy's name. If he's on Facebook, he probably knows. Uh, I don't know if he's on Facebook, but um, I, I think uh, I, that was a part. I lost the match, and I remember, like, I'm better than him. I beat him earlier in the year. I just, like, what are you doing out here? And I remember I got so angry, and I was just, like, um, and then the state happens, state tournament happens. I see the placings. Um, I'm, like, those guys aren't that much better than me, man. You're just not putting your heart into it. And uh, I remember that was like kind of what lit the fire um, up for me. And I uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to take this serious. Now, again, at this point, Zeb, I still don't know there's a college wrestling. I mean, That's I know amazing. there's college wrestling. That's amazing. To me. I know college when wrestling. does that happen? When but does I that don't... even happen? 
probably first time I talked to Jimmy, I think. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I'm being serious. Like, I watched it on TV, like, the NCAAs, but my mind, my pathway to get there, I have no idea that's happened. It's like, I don't know how this happened. It's like, I'm wrestling at Christ. So, you know, you, you, I, 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 I mean, I trained my butt off that entire summer. I didn't have a summer jab. I trained twice a day. I had no one to wrestle. So I just, I just literally lifted weights and ate and ran hill sprints. There's a hill by my parents' house. And that's all I did. And I came in there and my only goal was to scorch the earth. Still not knowing there's anything on the other side. I just know my only goal was to get to the state tournament at that point. I don't know what was on the other side, but it was just like, I'm going to slay everybody and get there. Is the base, is the bass guitar still a big passion or does so it start to take a back out. seat? Taking a back seat, I actually drop out of, um, of some of the curriculum, believe it or not. How does um, that go? There's probably some people pretty angry about that. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, but I had it was the decision to make. I was I was kind of over it because I saw that um, <laughs> I didn't want to. I, I I love music, still love music today, but I was like, um, this is this passion now is becoming like a uh, vision quest. Not to not to quote the movie, but it's becoming a vision quest now. I can't devote hours to practice in this and then train, eat, and then sleep and then go out there and perform. It just wasn't happening. So I actually dropped a number of the curriculum. I, I kept a couple of the classes, just kind of like the classes. But performance wise, I wasn't wasn't I wasn't doing a ton of like the school sanctioned performance anymore. And people were just taking a spot and you know take my spot or whatever. And you could do that because you could leave, you could just be a regular student. That's yeah, I can be, and that's kind it's of it's a what, regular high school with a specialization a in the arts. Yes, yes. Got so it. I just basically the last year I became a regular student and I wanted to do that. That's kind of what happened. So you come out the other side, you lose a state final, you get pinned in the state finals by Tony Johnson, right? Yes. Tony Johnson's fighting in Russia. We've talked about this before. Yes. He's yes. fighting all these crazy Russians. Um, I'm like, this is insane to see this guy, and he's a killer. That guy's a killer, right? He was the number one guy in the country that year because he went to Iowa State and they were going to have him do the dual thing. And I don't know a lot of people realize you really can't do the dual thing in college. It's hard. It's very hard to do. Yeah. You can do the four plus one, you know, like where you do four years of the sport you go there for and then maybe the one, right? Yeah. But that even that's real tough, right? That's, that's super tough. It's super tough. Um, The only person I've ever, like, you know, Tim Dwight did it, the kick returner for Iowa. He was really good at track. Kim Hamilton. You remember Kim Hamilton? Yeah, yeah. Kim was an All-American for Kent State in softball, and then they had her come back, and she threw the javelin and took fifth in the NCAA. Yeah, she was at the uh, induction, Hall of Fame induction. Yeah, yeah. Kim Hamilton's the real deal. You know what I mean? Like, that's Legit. really one of the only Legit. people I know that's done that. Yeah. Tomas tried it too, remember? Yeah, she was at Eldorado's. Remember she worked at Eldorado's? Yeah, but I said Tomas was a dual sport athlete, wasn't he? Well, that's right. Tomas did it, but Tomas something gave with something had to give with Tomas though. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? I mean, he he was a MAC champ, and then oh. something suffered. Wrestling suffered because he wanted to play football. Fair. So you know, and he never got back to where he was in wrestling after he'd won the MAC title as a sophomore, I believe. So right. yeah, to, you're that's right. To, for me, because I because I had to come in. That was me coming in. So the, no, I was already there. Yeah, I was already there. So I was redshirting that year. Okay, so you're in the state finals. You get pinned in the state finals. Then Jim Anderson's like, hey, we want to give you some money. And you're like, what for? Uh, Yeah, you know what? Jimmy, uh, Jimmy um, was uh, there at the state finals. I remember running into a couple. I, I, my longest conversation came with Jimmy talking to him at districts a couple weeks before. I mean, I think we said a high and buy at state, but that was it. Um. And uh, Coach Greenlee for OU. That was another one. Coach Joel is after you, huh? Joel Greenlee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He knows he potential. Had... He's a big guy. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, – if I was a parent that was involved in the sport, that was that would be another interesting conversation of, like, you know, you have a heavyweight-focused sort of, like, expertise. There was – um, what was the guy named? Beltran was the heavyweight starter at the time. And, then, like, you know, he's on Jeremiah the Jeremiah Beltran. Bell, yeah, Jeremy, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was, you know, that was an interesting conversation. I just didn't like Athens, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> well, it's out in the country. Like, you drive out. It's the, the middle of nowhere. Kansas, you get there, and boom, there's this college campus. 
and the van thing, the van thing, it's beautiful. The van thing wasn't my thing either. I didn't like the van thing either. I was like, ah, oh, I can't do the van thing, bro. Uh, but the from the standpoint of like where you're gonna be most successful, again, I can't even process this conversation because I don't know what success is. So where would you be most successful at? Even Cleveland State, Efner, um, because remember, um, Heck was the assistant there. And Cleveland State had the dude from Brandon, Florida. Right, right. Didn't know did that. You guys, did you guys hit a lot? Did you guys bang heads a oh, lot? Oh, I mean, every year. We dueled every year, and I beat him in some days one year in the Contes. You beat him at the NCAAs? The junior, when I had to, had to mount the comeback, I lost to Zabriskie in the uh, – when did I lose to Zabriskie that year? Man, I you forget. wrestled Zabriskie a lot, dude. I wrestled him twice. At NCA, oh, that time. was that was the blood round. So I lost the gritter in the quarters. I had to wrestle back. Wait, and, who beat uh, you in the quarters? Uh, gritter, Bubba Gritter. Bubba Gritter got you in the quarters, huh? Yeah, for Little his first battle, CMU battle, huh? Yeah, that was his first uh, AA. No, it was the second, second time he was all American. Uh, it was a quarter. It's like a two one three one match gift. But yeah, uh, me and um, um, Richard Goff. Richard Goff, that's the he's yeah. from Brandon, Florida, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. And he and was a big athletic me. dude. Yeah, I, I didn't know anything about that, even on my visits or anything like that. He was like, I thought, oh, you could be the guy. You can work with Keck, you know, this thing. Like, oh, okay, that sounds really good. But Brian Keck, was, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, um, but ultimately, Kent was the uh, was, was was the place. And I was like, what, fourth on a total bowl there? I didn't even know that. <laughs> when, when you get to Kent State, what are, what's your height and weight at that time as a freshman? I am probably 6'5 at that point, um, about 280-ish. Um, and I'm still kind of like, uh, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm putting it together at that point. Um, fairly strong, fairly athletic. I need more work on, I needed more work on like the fundamental athletic stuff that a lot of big guys had probably from football that I didn't have the footwork stuff. It came, but I just didn't have the footwork and maybe the mechanics. Some of the other guys had, and that's what football gives you. It gives you that ability to, kind of become a better land athlete wrestling um you're not really walk, you're not really tracing foot footwork so much you're not really um taking an emphasis on that so things like ladder drills and sprinting and that's you know if you could be you could be a little un- unathletic unless you, unless you do it a lot you know so i'm i'm a little i'm a big like dancing bear kind of thing like i'm just not i'm not coordinating yet you know so you get to kent you're the fourth string guy you get there there's tomas rodriguez he's the uh He's Mac yeah. Champ. Tomas is coming player. back from an ACL tear. Okay. Remember, Willie started the year before. So Tomas is back. So there's Willie Leonard, Willie, Tomas Rodriguez, Tomas, Dave Noga. Dave Noga. Dave Noga. Dave Noga was a surprise because remember, he was a 215 champ that uh, 04. He, yeah, he won Division One State for East Lake North. Yeah, he was a two. So seeing him there the first thing, like, what, 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 what are you doing here? Where are you going? 97 or something? Like, no. uh, your weight, no buddy. There's no way you're going heavyweight, but yeah, that was the uh, that was the that was the uh, I think it was somebody else too. I forget who it was, but yeah, it was like four or five guys in that weight class. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so you yeah, get there, you're, you're the you're the that. low man. You're the low man once again. So it's like eight days in, you see a fight at Akron Firestone. It's kind of like that, right? Is it that? Yeah, but this time, but this time I got a little chip on my shoulder because it's like. Okay. Uh, I got a fresh taste of defeat in my in my mouth from losing to uh tony johnson so i'm like i can get better i think i i, I can always like, i I'm, I'm still i'm still going like this in my mind and i don't know shit i don't know anything about anything but i know that i have potential at that point so, so like, your trajectory is like this man and, and like from from basically freshman year all the way up you didn't know anything you didn't know college wrestling really existed I didn't know it was college wrestling really <laughs> until like <laughs> so when, when do you I turn the corner year. when do you make your first ncaa tournament and when do you realize you can be really good at this uh, so this is, I make it as a sophomore. Remember, I, I'm in the finals of the Mac term as a freshman. They, they don't take, they don't take me. Um, did Bubba Gritter beat you there? No, I beat Bubba. I beat him in the fight in the semis. So you I beat Bubba Gritter in the semis. I beat Gritter twice. I beat tw- Gritter twice that year. I beat him at the dual meet when they came to Kent. And then I beat him the next week or the two weeks from, uh, at the Mac tournament, and it was like a major decision in the semis. So I got, I got steam. I get caught, I get pinned in the finals. Who pinned you? Um, the kid from Buffalo that Willie never lets me live down that he beat. 
Uh, oh, Willie, <laughs> Willie Leonard beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, Willie, Willie beat him. He never let me live it down. Whatever, whatever the guy's name hey, is. Wasn't it Willie you were wrestling when you hurt your thumb in the inner yeah, squad? Yeah, broke my thumb. Yeah, bro- Willie broke my thumb in a match, and then uh, he, it would he took no mercy on me. In the inner squad, inner squad match. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was Willie. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, so Ooh. then the next year, uh, I think I, that's when I take second to Gritter. That's the first time I lose to him. And uh, I uh, go just when um, NCAAs are in Detroit that year. And, uh, 2007. Yeah, and it's, that's me. Did you go 0 and 2? Her, yeah, I went to the barbecue. Uh, yeah, I went to the barbecue. Two and barbecue. Two and through. Two and yeah, two. I lost to the I lost to the Oregon kid. Oregon kid was all American that year. Scott Barker? No, it uh, no. I, I have to go back and look. I don't. I don't. That doesn't sound. That name doesn't sound familiar. It might have been. I don't know. But I lost to him in 07. He was all American. I think he took fifth that year. I, I drew him first round. And then uh, the kid from Wisconsin. We had a tough match, close match. Not, not Bugenhagen. No, a uh, Massey. Massey. Kyle Massey. Oh, Kyle Massey. Yeah, yeah he's Kyle, at Kyle, Columbia now. I think. Yeah, so that was that was massive. It was the second round. So you lost to two All Americans the year you're zero and two. <laughs> yeah, that first year I got a bad draw that year, but nobody told me what a bad draw really was. Well, because you didn't and, know anything. Yeah, I didn't know either. Like, yeah, I got you know, all right, I got the fifth seed, and I got you know, I think he lost in whatever match he lost, and then he drops down the counties, and then I get him to the next round. Which I think that second match is a little closer. Um, Who won those years? Cole Conrad. Oh yeah, Conrad run. Okay, and, and in 08, the year you lose in the blood round is Zabriskie who wins. Conrad, that's what he's, he pins on Spock. Remember he pins on, on Spock? Okay. Yeah, he pins on Spock on the corner of the mat. Um, okay. Yeah. That, so was, you, that was a pretty tough one, too. So you then lose. What was the blood round score to Zabriskie, the round of 12? Oh, it's, this is a heartbreaker. So uh, this is the score. It's it's I lose a writing time. No way. I lost four seconds writing time. That's <laughs> four seconds writing time, and that's what it was. Because I had the, I had the only takedown of the match. Um, he had he had takedown escape, and he goes down escape, and then so I, oh I think I got hit with stalling stall two stallings got a point. No but way. He had, but he had the, I believe he had the um, the writing time for it to hit a minute. So by the time I finally got out, it was four seconds left. Um, and I think uh, he just had to dance for like a couple seconds and that was it. You know, I took a couple long shots and just that was it, four seconds. Because it had been like, uh, we'd win in overtime. And I, and I, I like I like my eyes in overtime always. Uh but we would we would have went in the overtime and that would have been so yeah, it was four seconds. Whatever the favorite look at the score the score was, but I know that's how close it was. It was, that, it was that was a rough one. And that was when you guys are taking five, six guys at a time. Like you had the whole, you know, half the teams with so you. Kurt Gross came off the map before that match. Or no, a couple of matches before that. So he was so that was his last match. I forget who it, it might have been versus um don't tell me it was Johnstone. Jason Johnson, I, like, I forget the match was against, but he had just lost. I remember watching him walk back, and I was the last one left of the of the bunch. Everybody else was gone. Everybody, everybody else was out. It was me, and I had that match. And um, it was like Kel Sanderson sitting in the corner. I'm like, oh, that's Kel Sanderson. It's like, that's... <laughs> I kind of know who he is. I don't know much about wrestling, but I know who he is. Like, like I'm warming up, and like you know, you, you get you know, you're on deck, and I'm like, that's like Kel Sanderson. Like, I got to wrestle against. Dude, get coached by Kel Sanderson? Like, what, what's going I mean, I don't know who Zabriskie is. I think that's his first All-American, too. Like, what, what, what is this? What is this? I just had to win, like, four matches straight. And here I am now. <laughs> I think that's his first year as the head coach at Iowa State. Okay. I yeah, believe probably, it is. <laughs> probably. Wow, that's crazy. I think it was, like, unfair. Like, what, what is this? So, okay, you lose that match. Was it like your junior year in high school? Very was much so. Similar to that. Uh, the feeling was the same because I was like, I'm better. I know I'm better. You know what? I, I was like, I'm I'm better. And this is when they say, you remember coaches say all the time, you probably use it, worry about your match. 
I was not worrying about my match. I was worrying about everybody else, um, what they were doing and if they were making it. You know, that second day, there was blood around, so everybody's getting picked off. Everybody's going home. That's it. We're going with we're tucking our tails, going back to Kent from St. Louis. St. Louis that year. And, um, yeah, and I should have been worried about my match. I should have been worried about getting on the podium, um, but I wasn't. And that and that's where the lapse of focus, That's that was all it took. I wasn't ready. So but I knew I knew I, I knew I was better. I knew I was a lot better because I could I could do this. So you're the next year you win the MAC title as a senior, right? Win the MAC title, you go I, in seated. You're seated at the NCAA tournament. You're a top ten guy. I was seated both years. I was I was seated both years. I'm seated like fourth or third or fourth as senior, but third I was like top eight for sure. Or the yeah. year before. So you're seated. You're a top. You're a top three top four guy right yeah, you're seated sure. you're set up good in the bracket you yeah. get into that match with zach ray right yes what is the difference in the match with zach ray because zach ray you know he's an nca champion and um yes. you beat him very very tough to wrestle right so you got to beat him in the quarters and i think he might have lost in the blood run then he did an all-american that year he lost to schaefer who from Pitt, who you had some wars with who is <laughs> who is tiny? Who is teeny tiny now? He I, weighs I under two hundred pounds. Okay. He's funny. a Presbyterian in college. He was the head coach. He's okay. now like an, an athletic director, and they just moved him up into like an athletic director position, maybe with wrestling. But I interviewed him last year at the Southern Conference, and he's itty bitty. Okay, yeah. Well, that's you guys went opposite here. directions. Yeah, we did. We did. I kept. Uh, I got. I kept at it. To be to be fair. Um. Yeah, so Ray Ray was in the quarters, and that was, I mean, that was a tough match because we'd wrestled at uh, the uh, Virginia Duels earlier that year. And how'd that one go? Did you beat him there, too? Yeah, I beat, I beat him that year, too. Also, uh, that going overtime? That one might have been an overtime. I remember I was dog-tired after that match. It was just very hard to score on, very strong for a freshman. I mean, obviously, he goes on to be after chip. I mean, he was, like, he was very tough, real thick forearms, real, yeah. like, legs like he's so only like, about six one though he's like a lot I substantially mean, shorter than you six one but he's like it's like trying to wrestle a fire hydrant man it's yeah and you know and when they got those shorter limbs you know that tendon strength is jacked up so anytime you get a leg it's it's gone you can't get a leg you know so you gotta just uh and surprisingly not surprisingly but he had a very good gas thing a guy could go i remember, remember thinking that did you beat him in overtime at the Virginia duels, yes. And the NCAA, I was like, this is not going in overtime. And then, uh, oh, no, I was down. He was up. So I beat him in regulation. Yeah, I was I was you down. You took by him point. down to beat him, right? Yeah, yeah. I was down by a point. Yep. Dude, you don't even know. Like, I'm sitting there watching that. And I'm like, it's going to happen again. The, the curse. The curse <laughs> is going to continue. It's hey, it's, it, it's in my mind, too. Don't worry. I'm like, oh my God, dude, this can't happen again. 23 years in a row, 24 sure. years. Oh my God. Here this go. guy. Here. But what was crazy was Badleon was still alive. Yes. Badleon was, and he had, you, we had two All Americans. Kent State had two All Americans that you, year, but you did it first because you did it in the quarters on um, uh, Friday, Friday the, morning, right? Yes, yeah, Friday morning. Yeah, Friday, Friday morning. morning. And then he did it Friday night when he Friday beat night. the Oklahoma guy, Joey Field. Yep. And then, guys, you should have had more, man. You... That 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 team right there, I, 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 I've I been exposed enough to sports and, you know, by my profession, I'm able to understand the psychology of it. That team, that was the biggest stage for a lot of those guys, and myself included. But I had the only advantage I had is I'd been in the round of 12 or the blood round the year before. So the moment when I got there it wasn't too great. Now the semis are a different story, but the quarters I, I've, I've been I've been in the quarters before. I, I you know I think a lot of our a lot of our guys, even Mitchell, Mitchell AA is the next year. Yeah, a lot but Mitchell guys, lost a crazy match to Bell that he shouldn't lose. You guys should have had four All Americans that year. Mitchell easy. loses to Bell, who he beats the next year at the NCAAs. Chine Chine had a great tournament, right? Chine Chine beat uh Brent Jones, who was seated that year. I won like two or three matches. I'm not mistaken. I think was Kilgore a freshman. Kilgore was a freshman. Kilgore shouldn't have lost. Either. He was the fifth seed or the fourth seed. <laughs> Kilgore, Kilgore, 
was like, oh. You guys should have had five All-Americans. I, 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 like, that's not even like a stretch, what I'm no, saying. No, no. Oh, and Lashaway. Hey, Lashaway, yeah. Lashaway <laughs> gets beat in the blood run by yeah. Frank Molinaro. Uh, eight nope. to six or whatever. Stuff like that, yeah. And so, like, you got to think, there was a lot of, that was probably. uh could have had six All-Americans. <laughs> We would have had a, we would have had a, like, I think a moment was just, if you, we needed one more year. We had one more year. Yeah. Everybody, I mean, because the Mitchell and Belly out AA eventually, we just needed one more year. Yeah. And the thing about Drew Lashaway is, I believe he went two years to Bowling Green State University where he wasn't even at Kent State Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He did the one, he did the one year. Um, and then he joined us the next year. So he did the so one he year. went one year to Bowling Green, four years to Kent. Yes. Yes. That is. Think about that, because that year off is. That's it. That's 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 it. That that's the difference. I mean, whatever. He's a grown man with a family now. Like he was going to the open tournaments and stuff too. I remember seeing Larry or Lashaway there at uh, the open tournaments, and like he was there, but not with us. But yeah, he was. You know, he was. He was a guy going to Bowling Green. Yeah. Next day he shows up, and it's like, oh. You know, uh, you're actually on the team now. That's so, yeah. yeah. That was uh, that was uh, that was. Uh, yeah, we should have we should have had six. So you got you and Nick Badlion. He's the assistant coach at Ryder now. Pretty yeah. tough team. Um, they had an NCAA finalist two years ago. Nick does a great job, and it's a bookend All American, right? You got the twenty five and the heavyweight. But that's how we've been all the whole year. You know, uh, like I said I, I think Badlion. I remember seeing this kid. Like, there's no way this kid's gonna start. He's a true freshman. No way he's going to start for us right away. And boy, I was I wrong. Belion was as tough as they come. That Belion's was, a competitor, man. <laughs> it was Belion, but we needed that fire uh, to carry carry it because he was as tough as they come. That's for uh, sure. So you know, you look at that, and you know, you're an All American in wrestling. It's it's not how you want to finish. You lose in the semifinals to the eventual champ. You fall the sixth place and lose to. Two other NCAA finals and another and, NCAA champ. In retrospect, I shouldn't have lost in those matches. I mean, I'm being honest with you, but that just shows you. If I had to do one thing over again in life, I don't like, I don't believe in regrets. But if I had to have one, I would have probably started sports in general in seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. I needed one extra year of maturity. So if you think about starting eighth grade and almost like a transient property, if you shift everything over, like then you get an NCAA champ. In my, in my opinion. Okay. That's fair. I think that's a fair assessment. You know, my yes. kid's six years old, seven years old. He just turned seven last week. Dude, we played a baseball scrimmage tonight. <laughs> we got shellacked. Aurora just smacked us. But right. we're we're doing like a quasi-travel baseball league at seven. And I'm just like, are we doing this too early? Are we? Are we? Yeah, I it, don't know, man. That's a good question. You know, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm torn a lot, man, because I'm like, my thing with them is like, ah, they don't need to wrestle right now. They don't need to wrestle right now because the dude's athletic. We ran like a mile and a half yesterday. He beats me by 250 yards. And he's like, ah, why are you so slow, dad? I'm like, first off, dude, I'm 260 pounds. You're 60 pounds. Shut your mouth. I ran like, under, I ran a nine minute. If the minute... wind blows too hard, you're going to fly away. So stop. Yeah. It. I'm like, dude, I just ran a nine minute mile for a 260 exactly. pound man. Get off me. Wait till you're older. You understand? Yeah, I'm wait, like, wait till you're older. But like, it was weird because I think that's fun. That's just like something he likes to do. He likes to throw the football around. But I don't see like you never played organized football. No. You the only organized football you've ever played is in the NFL. Was Brian? Was Brian Ferentz coming or all? Back it up. Was uh, uh, Coach Larry McDaniel's? He was the uh, D line coach at Kent. Might have been Cornette at the time. Um, saying like he was a huge wrestling fan and he was like hey man i think you might have something and then so imagine my novice approach to wrestling now you, you want to restart it with football like really as a 22 it, 23 year old right yeah 22 22 year old yeah so you're 22 years old you're an ncaa all-american you're like ah this wrestling thing was cool i'm gonna have a degree from kent state yay and this Again, coach comes to you and is like hey, not even thinking about it not, not even not even on your radar no. like you're like, ah, I just lost the national titles kind of the way right. you're looking at it, right? I'm going to spring break. That's all I'm remember. going to spring break party, right? Like, yeah, I, I thought I can remember is like, I'm going to spring break. You know, we had it, told on. Did spring break get in the way of the NFL tryout? No, actually not. So we we fly back into Kent, Ohio um, Sunday from St. Louis, unpack our bags, pack our bags, 
hit the road Sunday night going into uh, uh, spring break. I come back. Panama? Yeah, Panama. We come Good back, times. whatever whatever time it is, whatever day it is, and uh, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to take Coach McDaniels up on that uh, football offer. So I call him up, and he says, just come to my office, and uh, we'll talk from there. This has got to be so, you know, NCAA was in March, so this is like third week of March at this point. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I crash course my way into – so he's like, all right, you serious about this? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I think you'll be a perfect office alignment. Have How you heard of Stephen time? Hill? How much prep time from – Panama City, seven straight days of drinking and staying up all night and eating garbage. Yeah. From that point to the scouts from the NFL coming in and seeing you, how much time from Panama City to NFL scouts seeing you actually work out? What's this time frame right here? Uh, three to four weeks, maybe. <laughs> you prepared for an NFL tryout in three to four weeks? <laughs> three to four weeks? Now, mind you, I'm like 280 at the time. Uh, well, I'm probably heavier because we're going to spring break. I'm in, I'm in wrestling shape, right? You know, so I have to like switch gears all together, and because uh, I'm undersized at 280, 280, no, 275, 280, I'm undersized for office alignment. It's unbelievable. Because I'm too tall, so I got to put on like 20 or 30 pounds. Was it hard? Uh the eating part after a while, yeah, because they said you, you got to just eat. Like it's like it's not healthy. It's just weight. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't good. I mean, it gets you a pot belly real fast. But I needed. I needed to at least. You know, if I was anything less, I just would have got you know pushed around too easily. Well, they, and they would have just been like, yeah, he's under three hundred pounds. They're not even I'm tight end, but I can't run pounds. that fast and catch. You know, I'd have been. I'd have been. That's a tight end size, seventy or two sixty. You know, at that height. You know, so, so I gotta be off as a <laughs> So I gotta be off as a lineman. So yeah. It was like three, three. It was like uh, the tryout was like a week before the NFL draft that year, which was at the end of the month in April. So I probably had tried out um, the second week of uh, April. I had a tryout at the school. Who I was the tryout with? Um, that one was. I think it was just New England because I would have. I would just the Patriots. Yeah, I would go on to have a few workouts at the school, but that first one would just be with the Patriots. I had a couple of my friends who were football players. Do you um, remember who the scout was from New England? Oh, it was Brian Fritz, who is the uh, offensive coordinator for uh, Iowa football right now. Are you serious? Yeah. His so dad, so, dad's the head coach at Iowa. Absolutely. So so Brian was the uh, – had just been promoted to uh, assistant offensive line, line coach. Um and uh, that was who was – that was doing my tryout. So a couple of my friends were football players. They were linemen. So I had to help me set up the bags. I had to work with this, that, and other. So to put me through my simulation, they had me do all the stuff. So I had good guys hold the bags, hold the pads. So, I, you know, it was a good it was a good go um, as far as that. But, yeah, it was like three or four weeks. You're, you had Crash something course. weird, though, right? Like you – because they make you guys do shuttles, and then there's a standing squat, and then there's a couple things where you did it where you were like – off the charts, right? Like, what were the things where you were off the charts where they're like, oh, my God, how is this big, gigantic guy doing this? Was oh, it so shuttles do, or your stretches? I forget. Yeah, so they do that mobility drill where they um, you squat down to full squat. You try to keep your torso vertical and bring your arms above your head. And uh, that's just how well do you bend? And obviously, from wrestling, you're hypermobile or hyperflexible. You know, you get you, you get all caught in all kind of scrambles and this. You know, I was never stiff, but you're not really stiff. So me do that, the perk of being sub 300 pounds, for me to do that was like just so just just like this, yeah, just like that, and keeping your heels on the ground and not letting your heels come up. I mean that. I mean that in a traditional course of football, of a traditional football career, a college career. I mean that could be a million bucks right there. Like, like this your guy, specs. You told me like your specs and all those those like drills and stretches yeah, and, yeah. and mobility. You they were like your specs were better than the number one draft pick at your at your position. Uh some of them were on par. I do yeah. remember that. Some yeah, like because they were that was like the big thing that what caught their eye, yeah, right? And like you know, you gotta. I mean, that's where you gotta give wrestling its credit. Like you know, to be a heavier heavy weight in college. At least for some of those years, you're you're competing with the Roshos and the Briskets. You gotta be able to move, you know, you know, and you can't be blocky, you can't be stiff, you can't be not very strong. You have to be in good shape. 
And a lot of those are anomalies in actual college football because those guys, they get sloppy, they get too big, they're not really, you know, depending on what offense they run, they might not have to do very much, that be accustomed to doing very much. So for me to come in, I'm like, um, like, dude, you should see some of the stuff I've had to do in my respect to career. This is nothing. This is easy. <laughs> this is nothing, dude. This You're giving nothing. me a break right now, dude. Right. You don't even know. This is what you guys are huffing and puffing about. This is nothing. Yeah. Hey, let's so go run the cool. campus, the hill on the front of campus, and watch everybody vomit. Exactly. That's we should put that in there. See, see, see how well, see how well they do with that. But yeah, it was like something like that. Um, but yeah, okay. I was surprised. So, at what point did they pick you up? What point did the New England Patriots pick you up and say, "Hey, we want you to come out, and we're going to put you on our our fifty three man"? Well, I got to get an agent first, and I didn't have to actually get an agent because two of them called me and. Uh, um, I don't remember the other guy, but uh, my agent was uh, Neil Porridge, who actually represented a lot of big time players, um, including Belichick um, um, at the time. Wait, uh, you and your coach, you and your head coach are the same agent? Yeah, and Stephen Neal. Oh, Steve. Okay, so that's the connection, right? Stephen yeah, Neal? Steve, Steve had the same. He had the same one I did. So Bill um, Belichick, Stephen Neal, Jermell Porter, all the Dallas same. Clark. Agent. Uh, I think Vrabel was on his uh, – Vrabel Okay, was his so this like, guy's yeah. got a big ticket. No. You're just another guy. And then guy. there's me. And then there's me. But, there's you. Yeah, there's me. Um, so <laughs> then it's, uh, the, tra- <laughs> the draft starts, and then it's Sunday night, and I'm uh, I'm sitting at home, and I get a call. And it might have been – so the current GM for the Houston Texans, Barrage, I think Barrage called me. He was, a, he was the uh, director. He was uh, – he was an assistant to Belichick, but he might have been something of player personnel. That's who called me and asked. At, me. At, he, so he was at New England, and now yeah. was he the he's the GM for the Houston yeah, Texans. I, 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 something, something of that okay. nature. You two called. So this guy calls you. Yeah, it's like eight thirty or, or no, it's like seven thirty, um, Sunday night because the draft. Are you so drinking hard. beers at this point? Are you moved no, on? I've been watching the TV because Neil goes like, they take Julian in the seventh round, but they have. A bunch of picks. I forget who else they healthy take. Wait, and hold on. Go- you and Julian Edelman went to New England at the same time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Do you know Julian? Yeah, because he, he was, was at Kent State. Yeah. Um. He. Yeah. So they took him in, in the seventh round, and I remember Neil calling me and telling me that, like, hey, they might have an extra pick. They might even just just draft you. You know, if if you didn't want to, but they didn't. I forget it. Dude, if you would have got drafted in the NFL, like, with, like, dude, like, I would have like had that. Like, I'd have lost my mind. Yeah, I would have lost my mind too. Long story short, I get called. And they say, "Hey, we're gonna sign you as an unrestricted free agent." And I'm like, "All right, sweet." They're like, "We'll uh, whoever our um, secretary will be calling you with flight information, um, and we'll be seeing you basically in a week. You know, you go to rookie minicamp." And uh, I'm like, "All right, great." Did you get to graduate? No, I was at uh. You graduated. Was, you didn't get to do the yeah, ceremony. Yeah, I graduated. Yeah, I, the graduation was during OTAs that year, so I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't so walk. you missed your college graduation? Are you? You're not the first college grad in your family, though. No, your parents are college grads. Yes. Yes. So it's not yeah. like oh, no, it's, I mean, can't bro, ever I, graduate. I can't even find my degree right now. I, I, I know my mom probably has it somewhere, but I couldn't tell you where it's at. Like I, I never, I never. They physically got it. I never did. So I don't, what I don't is your degree from Kent State? Uh, criminal justice. Criminal justice. Oh, yep. Dude, I can't imagine you in a cop uniform walking up to pull me over. Dude, the crazy thing about it was never even going to be like, a co- I don't know what the hell. Was. I think I was, not, at that point, I was going there to wrestle. <laughs> But now doing. look, you're an entrepreneur. You own your own yeah. business, and you get to work out for a living. So the thing is, I gotta go. I gotta go spend more money on certifications to actually go do something that I wanted to do. So after you know, I, like, I should just I should have just got my undergrad in exercise science and called it that. But who would have? I didn't know. Again, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know. I was just there. I was there to wrestle. That was it. Okay, but that's not true because you got a degree and now. You own your own gym and you use your yeah, sure. you use it, and that's how you manage your business. But how long are you with the New England Patriots? All the way through training camp. I get up to training camp, and they start making cuts. I'm one of those cuts. So okay. from uh, basically May all the way through August. Did Tom Brader ever say a word to you? Yes. Nice guy. Yes. Yeah. He. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say this story is. 
So the locker room at the urinal, he comes up, he comes up next to me, he starts taking a leak. He goes, so I hear you, so I so I hear you used to wrestle. <laughs> That's what he said to you? <laughs> so like I'm looking down because at first I'm like, can't make eye contact with Tom Brady. So <laughs> he goes, you know, he's sitting there. So or no, he says, I hear you're I hear you're the wrestler. <laughs> That's what I'm known as that point. I'm like, uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like Steve used to wrestle. Come on, Steve and Neil. Like, yeah, Steve. Steve He's wrestled. a world champ. Yeah, oh, yeah, just, champ. Beat yeah, Brock exactly. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. That's cool, man. He's like, yeah, wrestling was never my thing, you know. But <laughs> hey, that's a tough. Zips up. And goes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was that your only interaction with him, or was uh, it other? Like one of two, a couple high and buys, maybe. Okay. You know, but that was like the longest conversation. And I was like, oh. the goat, the goat had a urinal conversation with Jermail Parker. Is that the urinal? And he's oh. laughing. And he's like, well, he's not laughing. Just like, oh, yeah. Just talking, like, you know, just like nothing for him. <laughs> I was like, dude, I just talked to Tom Brady at the urinal. All right. <laughs> I get in one huddle with him. That's about it. Uh, yeah. He wants, a, he wants an extra rep, so he goes with the threes. I have no idea what I'm doing in that, in that particular play, but I just didn't mess up to get yelled at. So but that's about it, yeah. Oh, God. Did they ever ride you like, I can tell you've never played football. Every day, every day that the sun rose, I was reminded of that, one. <laughs> and two, they rode – Dante Scarnecchia, uh, widely regards one of the um, best offensive line coaches in the in the NFL, um, in probably history. Um, in fact, his tutelage is probably why I lasted with Kansas City so long because he was just one of the best. But oh, he was he, in Kansas City when you went to Kansas City then. No, he wasn't. But his his tutelage and his uh, you know his explanation and attention to detail was second to none. I think that's why. Um, I was able to integrate so quickly into Kansas City, but he he uh, he wrote us every day, and it was uh, I watched almost I watched grown men almost cry every day because he would just be calling. Dude, that's up. wild. If it was like in this day and age, he would have been fired a long time ago because some of the stuff he was saying, like you definitely can't say now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you, you definitely know what? Can't say no. Here's what's wild about you. You know, you were, you're, you know, you were fired up over COVID and you were like a guy oh. that like, you can take that though. And like, you've been no. probably verbally abused before. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, and- Coach like, Anderson said some crazy things to you. I know he has. Jimmy has said some wild stuff to me too. <laughs> but like, think about that. Like now, yeah. now you're getting paid six figures, you know, in theory, right? Yeah, if you sure. make the squad, you're going to get. Sure. What was Absolutely. league minimum then? Two hundred. Minimum then was uh no. So league minimum, if you started all ten games, it's probably like uh three seventy five maybe. It was three seventy five. Something like that maybe. I so you remember. got league? Did you get league minimum for two years then? I had a break when I was off, so no. Yeah, yeah. So technically, yes. Effectively, yeah. two years you got league minimum. Yeah. So I picked up and picked off, but yes. Gotcha. So um. What do you think, you know, as far as like wrestling, Kent State, do you think it prepared you? Do you think 100% were you, are you in that situation at all if it's not for wrestling? Uh absolutely not. I'm not I'm not in that situation any at all. Uh the wrestling wrestling prepared me um because I was willing to outwork those guys. The 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 Kansas the New England story is a bit unfair because I'm just so so new. Kansas City, I'm able to work and I'm able to outwork you guys because I'm just tougher than you guys. And it really, it really boiled down to I'm just tougher than you guys. Um, and I'll beat you in practice and I'll beat you in the weight room and I'll beat you during the sprints. And I, How but, long were you with the Chiefs for? Two seasons? Uh, year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. So you're with yeah. the Chiefs. Effectively, you got a two year NFL career if you count the four months, six yeah. months, whatever you're with the, the Patriots. <laughs> They call it a cup of coffee. I, I was there for a cup of coffee. So a cup of coffee, but that listen, can I, how many? You know, very few people can say they've played and been rostered in an NFL team. Think about it. It's under. It's only a couple thousand people. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. It's not oh. very many people, Jermail, and that's what's incredible about it. And then on top of that, people who've never played any football before. 
that's yeah. the other thing you got to think about because you got like your be. Antonio Gates is, you know, who becomes like an all-time great play basketball at Kent State, right? Yeah, he played high school football though. Yeah, whole, yeah, I get that, but still, he didn't play a down a college football, right, sure, and that, sure. you got to have that speed. You're, we're talking about a guy who's playing in the base, bing, 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 yeah. right? Who yeah. got a guy who's playing quarter. the base? Yeah, didn't want to get his butt kicked, so he went out for wrestling, and the next thing we know, within eight years. This nine years <laughs> under a decade, this guy's on an NFL roster. Come on, I just woke up. I'm like, all right, here we are now. That's waking so up, wild, man. Waking up in a hotel room, like, how'd they get here? That's kind of what it was like a lot. Who put you on skates and threw you down the one time? Oh, Kansas uh, City. Yeah, Tom Bahali. Tom Bahali was the fifth of in our outside linebacker to visit in. And uh, I remember it was cold, it was frozen uh, outside. You know, Kansas City get a lot of snow, but it got cold. And uh, I remember um, we were in to installing this new play, and the twos always go against the ones. So if you're the second team or third team, you're always going against the ones. So you, you give them the best looks. And uh, I was there, and he hit me in the uh, in the uh, chest. And I remember, uh, yeah, he he came off of a perfect pass rush, and I just I sat too high because it was cold out, and I was doing nothing until they said, "Porter, get in there." And I'm like, what? Like, bro, I've been sitting here, like, freezing the like, last, like, 20 minutes. So, like, I'm in there. You get to play. You get to the line of scrimmage. You get set up. I'm like, dude, I'm not even warm anymore. And he's, like, like sweating somehow. I'm like, what, 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 you know? And he just he just hit me in the chest and just sent me into the uh, airborne. I hit the ground. I remember thinking how hard the ground was. And then I was like, all right, somebody go in, whoever go in. Like, I was out. Like, I got embarrassed, and then you pulled me out. Like, bro, I can't even redeem myself. <laughs> Well, that's the competitor in you, though. You were wanting to compete. It's not. Like oh yeah, like- I was afraid. Like yeah, I'm like, dude, like let me let me get another one. Like it just embarrassed me. But they pull you out, put somebody else in. Uh, I think the starter was uh, Ryan O'Callaghan. He might have been getting water or might have been hurt. And, yeah, he's, he's 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 back in. You know, they're going. To- get out of here. Get out of here, Porter. Yeah, get, get back over there. Like oh, all right, see you guys later. So put the gonna- coat on. Did you have the big coat on? No, just during practice. I didn't have anything. I was just standing there. Like, like like a chump next to the rest of the chumps that were watching. That's 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 what that's what we were doing. Waiting to waiting to get a rep randomly. Did you ever dress for an NFL game? No, not for any of the home games. They only dress uh so they would only dress six guys. So they would have the starters, plus they had a guy named Barry Richardson. He was a swing tackle. Or seven. They would dress seven. Um, so they, they only draw seven linemen. They had a swing guard, a swing tackle. Okay, here's my question: You're on the sideline for all the games that where you're yeah. at, where you're uh, on the yeah. 53 man roster, right? Sure. Can at halftime or whenever can you then go in? Two offensive linemen go down. Can you then go in and suit up, or is it is that not? No, I don't know. I'm asking. You got to you got to give the uh, activated. The, you got to be yeah, activated. The active roster list, yeah. So and you have to pull. You have to pull like a defensive lineman out and play. Hey, man, you're gonna have to play some guard or some tackle. Yeah, dude, that's wild because you and would was, think they'd have it was way a weird more depth. Because uh, Ek was his name. Ek he played at Northwestern. He could also play tackle too. So he was. So a sweet you gotta guard. be. You gotta be a, a little bit of a Swiss Army tool. That was the key to longevity. The more you can tell you in the NFL, the more you can do, the longer you stay. If you can play left and right side, then you're useful. In this case, it's more advantageous to activate and have, um, you know, X amount of receivers, X amount of backs, X amount of defensive linemen. When you have a Swiss Army knife offensive lineman, like he can play left or right. So left tackle goes down, you're going in. Left guard goes on, he goes in. If he goes down, you're going in for him. You know, that's kind of how they, wow. they, uh, they, they kind of arranged it. So you didn't need, you didn't need a lot of us. Um, good or bad, you know, you know, you know, typically you carry 11 guys, 10, 11 offensive linemen. But they didn't. They didn't dress everybody. That's wild to me because if you think about a D one team with eighty five full rides and about one hundred and twenty to one hundred and forty on the roster, sure. the, they got guys for days. They got guys for days, man. They got. Sure. They have. They're twenty deep. But you got to remember some of these guys. Like that's the difference between college and pros. Those pros are they're the best of the best. They might have been the best guy on their t- entire team. Yeah, uh, guy- any position. Right. And so the guy in front of me played at Clemson. Um, you know, you're playing in ACC at the time, you know, you might be the best tackle 
on your team and you're the, you're the second, third, fourth guy on the pro team. You know what I mean? So unreal, man. Just, and then they got the bass player. They got they the got fucking bass player. And then they got me, who's just like, look, if I get a hold of anybody, I'm going to try to drive them to the dirt. That's about all I'm going to do here. Um, I'm not going to call out any protections. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to get, if I get my hands on somebody, I'm just going to attack them. That's, that's about, that was my only edge was like, look, I'll be physical. That's about it. You can guarantee I'll be physical, but I'm not seeing the, the corner creeping down or safety creeping down. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any of that. You better tell me because I'm just hitting who's in front of me. So that's kind of, kind of that. Jermaine, would you say it's accurate that those guys go through what, what that, what happens in the interior line between the D linemen and the offensive linemen? And then on the linebackers and the running backs and the tight ends, which is it, is it equivalent to like being in car accidents? Would your body feel like, I know you were a D one college roster. You're an all American, the NCAA semifinalist compare the body and how it wears on the body in the NFL and the interior line compared to wrestling in D one. Um, so I would say absolutely. It is very, very, very physical, even with the pads on, because if you catch, a lot of times, depending on the alignment of defense alignment, sometimes you just got to go play head up, and it's just like, you know, and it's over and over again. And you're getting up to it after a while, but, um, you know, after after the next morning, you find yourself popping four or five Advil or Tylenol or whatever it might, might be because everything aches, you know. That is uh, also probably one of the um, – significant problems being in the trenches because you're you're going i mean it's a fight the trenches are probably it's a legalized fight that's why from a standpoint of translate transferring from wrestling to being an offensive lineman or in some cases defensive lineman it's just a fight it's a it's a sometimes it's a two-on-one sometimes it's a one-on-one but you just fight you're in there banging and then for three or four seconds a whistle gets blown you run to the new spot and you do it again and if you got the better of you this guy this time he might get the better of you next time but your job is to make sure it doesn't happen. So you get in there and you you bang. And every once in a while, there's this dude coming from eight yards deep, running at full speed, and all of a sudden you get blindsided. <laughs> and then you're like, wait a second, who just hit me? And you're trying to hit the guy in front of you. You're trying to block the guy in front of you. And you get ran into, and it's just like a, just a bunch of like, it's like being in a dryer at spin cycle. Just total, just like you're yeah, saying, throwing a brick in a dryer. You, exactly. That's, that's how you just interview. Boom, 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 boom. What's going yeah. on? Car, rolling a car, rolling a car. Exactly. It's rolling a car. The collisions are like that. The jerking and the collisions and the physicality of it. So that's accurate. And you, and you try to, you try not to stay on the ground very long, but you find yourself in the ground randomly. You you just watch any game. Dude just (laughs) on the ground. Like, how did he get there? We're on a tape. He got rolled up on or somebody ran into him. Think about this one. Right. Where the guys get rolled up on by on the back by their own linemen and their running backs run into them. Think about that. That's, think that's about think about Derrick Henry hitting you in the back full speed. It's like a it's like a shotgun blast. Oh yeah, it's it's insane. And look at that guy. That guy's massive. Dude. It's, just, it's like a shotgun blast. Like... Derrick Henry is massive. Yes. He's hey, you know who I met and did interviews with? Beanie Wells. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dude, sure. well, he's from Hackerin, right? Yeah, he's from Garfield. Yeah. Hey, that guy is massive. He was a running back too. Yeah, uh, he's dude. He's six three, every bit of two forty, and he still looks real good, man. Yeah, try, try trying to be a linebacker, trying to bring him down. Yeah, and ima- <laughs> but but imagine you having that guy run into you full speed, just incidentally, or he gets knocked into you, or whatever. Yeah. That, that that would definitely I mean all that like I said all that all that sucks and it's like unsung heroes like those guys get in there and they line up to, but it's very fun I, I like I said it's it's fun but it comes at a price essentially you talk about you know there's like regret you don't it doesn't sound like you have any regrets about playing practice squad in the NFL um you say that there's regrets about your the NCA your senior year what I mean wh- what do you what do you do every day? to kind of impart knowledge to people and to make that, make that acceptable to you because you're, you're a competitive guy and you want to win. How do you like deal with that every day? And how do you how, impart your knowledge on other people? Um, you take, you take, uh, feelings or things you, people, they say it's a, that's a saying in sales, right? They say that people will remember how you make them feel. So I know how, how I felt 
and that's what stays with me. Even still with football, I still feel like it was left unfulfilled, but I'm glad this my time in there was what it was because I had to build a life and build a business. And blah, blah, blah. It wasn't my love and passion. I wasn't 13 saying I wanted to play in the NFL. Just like I wasn't 13 saying I wanted to be NCAA champion. I just didn't know those things were really possible. Like that was the biggest thing. I didn't know they were possible. So I try to I try to take the approach of all the lessons I learned from wrestling and then football, whether it's organizational things, whether it's doing extra, whether it's um, um, staying late, coming in early, all those lessons you learn from being at the top or trying to be better. You try to give it to your clients. You try to give it to the younger athletes. I, got, I mean, I got a ton of kids I train. I'm trying to tell my look, you don't know this at 14 right now, but let me be the first to tell you, if you do these things, pinning a little bit of genetics on your side from mom and dad, you might be something. You might you might have something, but you got to follow these instructions. I'm only telling you from what I know, because I didn't know anything at your age. And now I know something at my age. I'm trying to tell you, like, these are the keys. You're already ahead of where I am, because I didn't even know this was possible. And I take those lessons that I learned, and I try to give them to people freely. You know, that's, that's really what it is. And it is the only deal breaker for a lot of people is it requires effort. And a lot of times the effort just isn't there. How much do you think Kent State wrestling changed your life? Oh man, it, it changes the whole trajectory of what I thought I was going to do, you know, and I don't, and I don't get the opportunity to go play football if it's not for Kent State wrestling. And I don't think I get the, I, we'll be honest, the physical attributes I have, are from wrestling. I could have been a big, slow offensive lineman in high school and, and, and wouldn't play football. Wrestling gave me the tools to go compete with no college career in football and go compete with guys who spent anywhere from two to four years playing at a Big Ten or SEC or I got to compete against those guys just from wrestling. And I was doing the same things Nick Bentley and I had to do, running the same distance Danny Mitchell or doing the same workouts, all he's got to do because wrestling is kind of like inclusive in that way, good or bad. Like, Hey, if we're going to go run the hill, that means you too. Football, all right, you guys go run this big guys. You guys go run, run that. Okay. That's, that's reason. No, if you guys are running eight miles, that means I got to run eight miles. So it made you a lot tougher. It made you, uh, my physical attributes were really, really high. Um, and I think my athleticism by that time had came together really well because you have to be athletic to be there. You know, do you, do you have a, a favorite memory from one of your teammates, housemates, guys you wrestled with? You know, are you still close with guys? And are there things that when you guys get together, do you still talk about uh, about Kent State wrestling? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got a couple group chats with the guys now. Very various uh, different break off the little groups of the group chat. But I talked to a good, good amount of the groups. Uh, Favorite memory, um, you know, it's, like I can say it's always going to be the Central dual meet when we went up to Central and won. That's probably my favorite because it was just it was five years later after watching that squad that I was redshirting behind get beat by Ashland. Like we were losing to we were losing to Ashland University. Not saying anything bad about Ashland, but like we went from losing to that to beating the number five or four team wherever they were at the time team in the country. At, at their house, but we had grown together. That we're a bunch of under. Jimmy did one thing right with that class, which I think was his first class. He picked a bunch of guys who were like underdogs, who were like who still had a lot left in the tank, and might have been overlooked. I think a lot, we would have been overlooked everybody, but Jimmy like kind of picked up like this guy might be something. This guy right here might be something. This guy right here might be something. And that's kind of how by the time you get to the very end, that's what you had was the group you had. Did but yeah. You you had Bubba Gritter from Central, and then you wrestled Trice too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, Trice. What, what was your so, record with Dry Trice? Uh, two and zero. Oh, you never lost to Trice. No, that's Barlow. Barlow lost. Him. He yeah. was an All American the year you were an All American, though, wasn't he? No, oh, he was. Uh, him and Ray were the same same age, same grade. Oh, okay. So the next year. Next year was All American. Dry Trice was the real deal, man. He was he really was tough. good. He was tough. I, I think. Zach, he wasn't a. He, although I went over time with him too. Also, um, he wasn't as much as a puzzle as uh, Ray was. Ray was like a puzzle because he was so. No boy had a lot of skill. La Trice had a lot of skill, but as far as the physical imposing, like hard to move, like it was a stylistic nightmare for me versus Zach Ray. It wasn't a stylistic nightmare with Doughboy. 
because he was uh, very athletic. And he wrestled like a he tried to wrestle like a ninety-seven pounder. The Doughboy was uh, first off great nickname for Gerard Trice. Yeah, the, the, try, I call him Trice. Whatever. I'm sorry. I just what I what I. No, Doughboy was his nickname though. He yeah, used to wear the Doughboy like, finger. That's no, that's hey, like legit. This. That's just, he, he really embraced it. <laughs> see this guy call him Doughboy. No, no, yeah, yeah that that was Gerard Trice went by Doughboy, wore the Doughboy singlet. That was his yeah, deal. Doughboy. Yeah, um, dude, I love hearing it. I love seeing you. I gotta catch up with you. I gotta get over there and check out your facility out and see you train yeah, man. people, man. I yeah. love it. I'm, I'm here. I'm here all the time. <laughs> what? Hey, hey, is being a a small business owner and entrepreneur as glorious as you thought it would be? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's fulfilling. But you love uh, it. I love it. I love it. But uh, it definitely probably led to me going bald early. Um, and uh, yeah, it is not whatever whatever anybody lie anybody tells about entrepreneurship or small business is an absolute lie. It is it is a grind every 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 day and then twice on Sundays. Do your uh, clients does your clientele know that you played you know two NFL seasons roughly, NCAA D D one All American and say semifinals? Do they know these things about you? Do they know no, the story? I, like if we showed this to most of your clients, would they know? Um. I think the kids do, um, because they got Google. I don't know how much of the general population does it. I mean, I mean, ask a few. It's not like I use that as a sun coin. The uh, the the younger athletes are savvy enough to know that, you know. But I think the my general population crew, I I, I think I think seventy five percent of them do. Twenty five percent of them have no idea. They just like there's this big guy that owns this gym. And this is where I go. <laughs> Big gigantic guy on the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I, you know, I uh, if they come in my office, I have a couple things hung up. But you got your all American plaque. Yes, I have the all American plaque. Can we up. see it or not? What's that? Can I see it? Oh, I got the computer. It's on the uh, the Zoom is on the computer. Okay. And that's I didn't I didn't use my phone. You can't um, snatch it off the wall for me. Oh yeah, here, here you go. There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta get a picture of this. <laughs> hold that bad boy up. There you go. Yeah, buddy. All right. Yeah, so I got I got like stuff like that around, and you know I don't think they get they don't nobody really comes to my office that much. So, I mean, if they got curious and want to ask, I'm sure. But I don't, people I don't, don't know what that is though. That certificate. No. That's one. You know, that's because they get two of them. One goes on the office wall usually, or the room yeah. wall, and then the, you guys get one because Ian Ian never picked us up. Of course, I'm sure you're shocked. But Ian never picked us up, and I had Ian's. I had his sixth place one from New York City, and I was like, yeah, I guess you don't want this. And they gave it to my brother. I hang on to it. I had a lot of stuff in boxes, but, I, you know, I started packing it when I wanted to decorate the office. And, uh, yeah, I got I got, uh, got some – but, yeah, they don't really ask. Some some, some no, some don't. Um, but I'm cool with that. I love it. Jamel Porter, do you have anything else for me? Is there anything I missed? Where can people train? Where can we find you on social media? And how do people come to your gym? Where's it located? And why do we promote it and talk about it? Um, I am uh I'm on Instagram, fun fit C L E. Um, that's the easiest way. It's called fun, fun Fit fun, C L E. Yeah, Fun Fit C L E. So it's like an abbreviation of Functional Fitness Cleveland. Just fun. Functional Fit Fitness Cleveland, and you're on Instagram, Fun Fit C L E. Yeah, how fit, can CLE. we find you? How, what's your email if people want to email you? Jermail at ffasc.com. Jermail. I love it. And then where are you guys located if they want to come in? Uh, Right off the intersection of Warren Village and Edgecliff Terrace. So it's a, that's the, I tell people look, look for the giant eagle because it's like one of like six in this area. And that's the big one. So yeah, look, look, look for that. West Park, Cleveland, Ohio, right? Yeah, West Park. West Park. Uh, it's a big plaza. The Warren Village Plaza. The plaza with the clock tower. That's another one. There's a huge okay. clock tower on top of the building. Love it. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right, man. Kent State Wrestling Talk. That's a hey, wrap. I love watching these. So I, I watch them. I, 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 uh, I pop in and watch these. You know, I get like a tie. These are, these are, these are all, uh, these are always awesome to do. So I like watching these. I mean, yours is just pretty good right now. So I, I think Jimmy is going to be nice. He's going to be thankful to get the, the week off. <laughs> Jermail, thank yeah. you for the time. Yeah. I appreciate you. And hey, man, keep grinding, keep training people up, and keep spreading that it. knowledge, all right? You got it. I'm doing it.